God is. Or to say it with our text, God is who He is. Or to say it philosophically, God absolutely is. Period. And everything changes. One of the billions of facts of all the billions and billions of facts that there are this fact God is is the most basic and the most ultimate all other facts rest here all other facts go there there is nothing underneath the fact God is holding it up nothing above the fact God is to which all is tending this is the most basic most ultimate fact that is God is we are blown away by the truth that God is and if you aren't you're asleep it is a staggering thought and reality God absolutely is This is explosively uncontainable. This is wildly untamable. This is electrically future creating. And so what I want to do now is to tell you 10 things that it means. God's absolute being means he never had a beginning. Number two, God's absolute being means God will never end. He won't go out of being. If he did not come into being, he cannot go out of being because he is being. Three, God's absolute being means God is absolute reality. There is no reality before God. There is no reality outside of God unless God wills it and makes it. He is not one of many realities before he creates. He is simply there, and He is absolutely there. He is all that was, eternally. There was no space. There was no universe. There was no emptiness. There was only God, and that's all that ever was eternally number four God's absolute being means that God is utterly independent he depends on nothing to bring him into being, 
or to support him or to counsel him or to make him what he is, that is what the word absolute being that I'm using means. Number five, God's absolute being means rather that everything that is not God depends totally on God. All that is not God is secondary, dependent. The entire universe, let it be said clearly and matter of fact, the entire universe is secondary. And God alone is primary. The universe came into being by God, stays in being moment by moment on God's decision to keep it in being. It is utterly totally fragile and dependent and secondary. God holds it in existence every millisecond of its being. If he changed his mind, it would be nothing. Six. God's absolute being means all the universe is, by comparison to God, as nothing. Number seven, God's absolute being means that God is constant. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He cannot be improved. He is not becoming anything. He is who he is. There is no development in God. There is no progress in God. Absolute perfection cannot be improved. Number eight, God's absolute being means that He is the absolute standard of truth and goodness and beauty. There's no law book to which he looks in determining what is right and just. There is no almanac to establish the facts for God. There is no guild to determine what is excellent or beautiful in art, music, creation. He himself is the standard of what is right, what is true, and what is beautiful. Number nine. God's absolute being means God does whatever He pleases and it is always right and it is always beautiful. There are no constraints on Him from outside that could hinder Him from doing what He pleases. All reality that is outside him, he created, he designed, he governs, 
as the absolute reality. So he is utterly free from any constraints that don't originate in the counsel of his own will and therefore being absolutely free he always does his good pleasure and it is always right and beautiful and number 10 God's absolute being means that he is the most important and the most valuable reality and the most important and the most valuable person that is. He is worthy of your highest interest your greatest attention, your deepest admiration, and your sweetest enjoyments. Including being superior in all those ways to the whole universe. That is what we believe. God is. It is a wildly untamable, explosively uncontainable, and electrically future-creating reality. God is.